Hey, welcome back to the Big Grand Show. Thank you for joining me. Now, boy, did I touch a nerve back on Friday with that video about Dylan Mulvaney, a beer can, and Bud Light. I didn't realize so many people were actually that butt hurt over it. I was just trying to make a video in support of somebody that I really, I, I really have grown to like over the last year. And almost 500 views, a number of them from people that just were absolutely hateful. And so I'm not, I'm not one bit sad about um, the, the hate comments because you know what? People are going to send hate because there's always those bigots out there that don't care about anybody else but themselves. And they're only worried that they aren't the center of attention. Well, you know what? I don't really care. So let's see what more trouble we can get into this week and what more comments we can get brought to this channel. Now, if, you, if you've been a long-time viewer of this channel, you know that I'm a big supporter of women's rights, um, LGBTQ rights. Um, and so when Roe came down last year as being overturned by the um, radical right-leaning um, court, um, I was rather upset, rather angry, because I was worried about exactly what happened, what's almost happened to Michigan. When Roe v. When Ro, Roe v. Wade was overturned, it automatically kicked in um, laws um, from the past, right, in certain states. Um, I forget what they call them exactly, but they basically were laws that would automatically kick in if Roe was overturned. In Michigan, and this, is, this picture here is of Governor Whitmer, of um, Michigan. And in Michigan, they had a law on the books that got suspended by a judge after the fall of Roe v. Wade, um, but it was still on the books, right? That from 1931, a law that banned um, all forms of abortion and all abortion, regardless of reason. Rape, incest were not part of it. Life of the mother still wouldn't have been allowed. So with bipartisan legislation um, being signed by her in Michigan, key, key right there, bipartisan, right? That means there were some Republicans that actually agreed. I find that interesting with the Republican Party, right? Because most Republicans don't care. Most Republicans don't care if women have rights. But up in Michigan, they joined on board to make sure women had rights and rights to have their own, you know, to their own bodily autonomy and the right to their own reproductive, you know, system. Now me, I've always been a supporter of abortion rights, not because I, I think or don't think it's a good thing, but because it's not my decision. I don't have a uterus for one, two, if I did, it still wouldn't be my uterus. What other people do with their bodies is none of my um, decision making. It has nothing to do with what I feel. Because my personal views don't matter when it has to do with somebody else's life. Like I've always said with the trans, um, you know, discussion over trans people and LGBTQ issues, you know, you don't have to agree with us. You don't have to live how we live. That's fine. But you also shouldn't get to tell us how to live. We don't tell you how to live. You don't tell us how to live. Right? You have your views, we have ours. And that's reasonable. I mean, there's, there's a thing going around for a long time that basically is like, if you don't like abortion, don't have one. You don't like guns, don't have one. You don't like a gay marriage, don't get gay married. It's really simple. But Governor Whitmer... 
um, did the right thing here by signing this legislation and giving women of Michigan, you know, their ability to make their own decisions. It's no one else's decision what a woman does. And if conservatives really cared, of course, they would provide things like, you know, more funding for food stamps, Medicaid for children, and the WIC program. There wouldn't be so many hoops for pregnant women and mothers of infant children to get done with, you know, to get the things they need for their kids. If you're going to force women to have children, then maybe you should also cover the cost. Because it's a very it's a very economic decision a lot of times for people. Say they already have four or five kids, and they they can't afford it. They don't have health care, so they can't afford to go to the hospital and have the baby. Or do the proper prenatal, you know, checks and everything that, that a, a fetus needs. And to, so it can grow into a good, healthy child. You know, there's the economic side of it. There's the, the emotional toll that it could be given to, you know, that could be, that could be taken on a young female who was, you know, a victim of incest. You sit there and say that young bodies are not meant to be mutilated. But you're going to force a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, or even younger to have a child? Even though it's not going to be safe for them? And I keep, every time I make that comment on a video, people are like, oh, that doesn't happen. But it does. It sadly happens more often than you would like to admit. Or that you would like to know. The things you come across when you do a lot of research for news stories. You come across a lot of disgusting things that you realize just how bad it can be for people. It wasn't that long ago that a 10-year-old girl had to be ushered out of her state, of, I believe, of Indiana, and taken to another state to have an abortion because her state wouldn't allow her to have one. And the doctor that sent her, her and her parents to go have this done, the doctor was under, you know, investigation for it. Now the doctor's been cleared of all wrongdoing since then, but it happened. And the laws have only gotten stricter in places like Indiana. So thanks to Governor Whitmer, women keep their, their reproductive rights, their bodily autonomy in the state of Michigan. Anyways, this has been the Big Grand Show. I'll see you down the road.